Hello everyone, how are you doing today? This is a kind of off sequence video uh, where I am talking about C++ STL for C++ beginners as well as for non-C++ programmers which means that there is not gonna be any code writing in this particular video but I wanted to create this video because I am in love with C++ STL and the kind of engineering it does to the language I truly believe that something similar can be created in other languages or you can take the idea from the C++ STL and implement the same in your own programming language. This is something without which uh, there was no chance for C++ to be there where it is today. Okay, so in this video we are gonna go ahead and see what was the reason behind creating STL and how STL solves the problem. Okay. Before going ahead, just one statement. If you are a C++ programmer of the day and want to create a C++ code and if you are not using STL, you are missing something very best the programming language has to offer. In fact, in today's world, in today's C++ world, it is unimaginable to create a C++ code without using STL. So, Think about it, learn STL and use STL, you will not gonna regret it, okay? It's only for people who are working on C++. Now let's talk about why STL was created. So this is something I have repeated in many of my videos. Each and every program written in any programming language has only two things, data, functions. These are the only two things that constitutes a program. So there is a set of data and set of actions which is represented by a function. So function acts on data. For example, uh, let's assume we have a sum function and it takes some data a and b and it sums those two numbers returns it back. So functions acts on data. So for a moment, let's go back approximately 30 years when C language was predominant or we can say that procedural programming was predominant. In those days, what had happened is that, you know, people use data and functions, but they were scattered around the, you know, multiple files or multiple projects. So there wasn't any well-defined way of combining data and functions and uh, it looked like that only the programmer who has written the code knows what data is used by what functions. To solve this problem, object-oriented programming came into picture and it talked about combining data and functions, related data and functions in a class or in an object so that it's easy to identify the data and functions which are related to each other. So if you want to know more about this thing, I will highly recommend you to see my video on object-oriented programming. I have clearly stated what it is and why it is created. So even with the arrival of object-oriented programming, there were only two things in a program, data and functions. Now let me talk about a very specific problem. Let's assume that I'm a good programmer and I created a sorting algorithm, okay? which is much faster than existing sorting algorithm, quick sort, merge sort, or any other sort. It is an extremely fast sorting algorithm. So in the language, how I'm gonna write the code? Here is how I'm gonna write the code, right? So I'll create a class and I'll create a function. In that function, I will take some set of integers and then I will do sort and then I'll return sorted R integers, okay? And if someone want to call my sorting algorithm, here is how they can do that. They'll create an integer of arrays and they'll create the instance of my class, call my function and get the sorting result back or the sorted data back. No problem, looks fine, but there is a problem. Can you think about it? The problem is this sorting algorithm works only on integer data type. But sorting can happen on other things also, right? Sorting can happen on a string. Forget a string. It can also happen on user-defined type. In fact, you know, during sorting, we just need to do only one thing. We need to compare two things, whether it is, you know, integer floating point string or user-defined type. 
which is big which is small so that we can arrange the things that's what sorting algorithm does isn't it which means that the sorting algorithm is independent of type of data that is coming to be sorted okay but in this case nobody is able to use anything other than integer because there is no function which take anything other than integer until and unless i create you know multiple function which takes floating point string as well as user defined type nobody can use this algorithm or they need to take this algorithm adopt it to their own user defined type and then use it so this was the problem which stl standard template library solves and here is how it does that so in stl there are three major things one is container second is algorithm third i will talk about so container as the name suggests it contains data data could be anything integer floating point user defined type object anything you can think of container contains data algorithm as we talked about you know the sorting algorithm i just talked about consider this algorithm as sorting algorithm okay so what it does it takes data and sort it but are you seeing something you know different in this picture the algorithm doesn't take data directly it takes data from an intermediary which is question mark and which is called iterator so what stl says that stl separates data and algorithm and it says that stl algorithm will not work on data instead it will work on iterators so if you want to get your data sorted convert your data in the form of iterator and then you will get it sorted okay now you will say i understood container i also understood algorithm but iterator why i'll tell you iterator provides a uniform interface for accessing data to the algorithm so as a very simple example let's think about it if you want to sort you know array of integers okay so if you pass array of integers and you take a memory location and do plus plus you will get next element of the array but instead if you pass a linked list and if you do plus plus you will not get you know next element in the list right for getting the next element in the list you need to do you know linked list list next right so depends upon different type of data different type of access mechanisms are there what c++ stl does is that no matter whether i am using arrays or linked list if you do plus plus you will get next element so this is how you provide a uniform interface to the algorithm so that algorithm when it does plus plus or it does some subscript it knows that it is actually accessing the data getting the data plus plus means getting the next data okay so for algorithm the interface for accessing data is same that's the precise reason there is one to one relationship between containers and iterators so for a vector container there will be vector iterator for a dq container there will be dq iterator for a list container there will be list iterator so if you want to create your own container you have to create your own iterator so that these algorithms can work on your container data so the problem about which i talked about in my sorting algorithm solved beautifully over here algorithm will always work on iterators not only this the stl also has some accessory things like comparator functions which we can also create okay so you can see that you know when you pass user defined type the algorithm might not know how to compare to user defined type you know you create two object how will the algorithm know that which object is bigger which object is smaller because if you talk about sorting algorithm it needs to know which is bigger which is shorter so in here you can also provide a comparator function which will be called by the algorithm to check whether this element is bigger or that element is bigger which means that the algorithm is even comparator function independent which means that the algorithm does what it has to do without worrying about data type and without worrying about how to compare the data think about it if you are creating a sorting algorithm you do not need to worry about data type and you do not need to worry about how to compare if we create it for int 
less than greater than work but what about objects we do not know right so in this case the algorithms can work on any given data type with any given comparative function isn't that great so this is what stl does so in stl there are only three things plus some accessory function they are containers containers for holding data what stl says that if you want to store the data forget about you know how much memory it will take expanding the data shrinking the data and generating iterators so that algorithms can work on it forget about everything i will take care of that there are two types of container sequence and associative container sequence means it will honor the insertion sequence associative container will keep it in a sorted order okay then iterators and function so this is how c++ stl was designed and let me tell you it's a huge success so thanks a lot people thanks for watching till the next time we meet good day goodbye take care